Hi, my name is Olivier Charbonneau, and I'm a librarian at Concordia University in Montreal. I'd like to take a few moments to present my project that was just awarded a prototype fund through the Knight News Challenge. Thank you very much, Knight Foundation, for this, uh, for this uh, grant, as well as your support. I appreciate it immensely. So about a year ago, I was at the Montreal Public Library play festival called, in French, Montréal Jou. And Concordia University's TAG Center, that's the Techno-Culture, Art, and Games Research Center, where, where I'm affiliated, um, was host, hosting a parallel event called Arcade 11 at the, uh, on the 11th floor of the EV building, uh, which is actually at uh, the corner of McKay and St. Catherine Street uh, West. Um, we were hosting a, a play fest uh, of uh, our, uh, you know, students' games, and but also uh, games from grads, uh, graduates, of uh, Concordia as well as some of our friends and so we had them over we had uh, this our community over uh, on the 11th floor of the EV, EV building where TAG has its uh, lab and uh, I was walking around the Playfest. you know we had uh, people with uh, ND game controllers with all sorts of uh, crazy and interesting games we had the uh, arcade uh, cabinet from the Mont Royal Game Society uh, in Montreal which is a, a custom cabinet a game cabinet kind of like an arcade back in the 80s uh, but made with uh, custom made games um, so a lot of really interesting uh, play experiences and digital games indie games um, and I I was wondering uh, as a librarian how can I buy those games how can I have them in my library and we're not talking about you know games on a media or any kind of you know physical media but really born digital games and so I was talking to the different um, indie game developers asking them how it's possible and nobody was quite sure and I was talking to uh, librarians who were coming in from the city of Montreal public libraries and, and you know they wanted to have those games in their collection but not sure how it would happen and uh, talking to the researchers about uh, you know uh, indie game culture and game literacy and all those wonderful questions and the idea that uh, libraries, public libraries, but also from school boards and universities and other kinds of libraries can have an interesting impact in game literacy. And everybody was wondering why this isn't happening. Um, and yeah, we kind of identified a few issues why potentially there's technological issues like how would that happen? Would you stream the games? Would you download the games? So those are technological issues. You, you would need proxy servers and passwords and all sorts of interesting uh, technological uh, things to happen. Then you had community issues. So, for example, uh, you know, uh, how would you uh, describe the games? How would you have them available via the catalog, uh, via the library catalog, via websites? How would that happen? Would you have uh, reader assistance or reference services happening? How would you educate people about these games and assist them in in in, in using them and playing them? And so, those are community-based issues. Um, and and you know, those that's so that's a, another thread that we kind of talked about a lot. And then the final thread, which is, you know, the one I'm most personally interested in as a PhD student in law, uh, is uh, what kind of licensing needs to happen between the indie game developers and the libraries so that libraries can make these games available as a born digital uh, thing. And so also, how do you remunerate the indie games developers? What kind of licensing fees are associated to those, the subscription cost, and how would that work uh, with copyright? And so uh, talking about these different points um, and being inspired by them, uh, I drew up maybe a two, three page document uh, kind of summarizing all of that. And this was in la um, you know, last April that this happened, this, these conversations. Uh, and um, I, I wrote up that document, presented around, sent it around to a few people. They, everybody thought it was a great idea. But then summer rolled along and <laughs> I had to work on my thesis. So I put the document in a, in a drawer and focused on my thesis for the summer but then in September 2014 uh, the Knight Foundation issued its uh, news challenge its uh, 12th news challenge and the theme was 
bang on the money. It was, how do you uh, innovate in libraries to engage communities? And I'm like, wow, this is a perfect opportunity to bring the project out there and see if it flies. And so uh, with the team at the Technoculture Art and Games Research Center and a bunch of really motivated people all around Montreal and the world, we drew up this wonderful project exploring these three th threads, the technological thread, the community thread, and the legal thread. And the Knight Foundation uh, was excited about it. They were interested in it. And uh, so they've asked us to take the big idea and create the first prototype, which uh, would build on these different threads, but bring it into something that's tangible and de deliverable within the next few months. And so that's actually a really interesting challenge. So we had to figure out out of this big edifice, out of this big construction, what would be the first brick. And that's where we came up with a library game console yes so we would create we will create we are creating a dedicated set top box no screen this isn't a tablet this is literally uh, a, uh, a a mini computer we are using the raspberry pi as an inspiration although we think we need a little bit more power in there to run some of the uh, indie games that we're thinking about we're not quite sure on the um, you know on the specs yet but we're looking at a lot of different options i tell you a lot of different options and so we have uh, brought the prototype phase into uh, another set of requirements that we're looking at so the first one obviously is the 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 case itself um, because it will be handled in a library setting so you have certain requirements that it needs to follow uh, so looking at the case itself but also having it used in a home setting so that has other sets of requirements that we're looking at uh, and then this case will probably be in some kind of kit right so making it available uh, with controllers with wires with instruction booklets and all sorts of interesting things that need to go in probably some kind of kit uh, so that's another uh, part that we're looking at so, and those two things are part of the physical object kind of th thread of the prototype project the next thread that we're looking at is the launcher. So obviously operating system software issues, you know, you, 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 you would take this kit with a device in it and controllers. People would borrow it from a library, bring it at home, open it up, connect it to their local TV, to their personal TV sets. Uh, and so once they plug it in, what happens? You know, there's a, there's a launcher that opens up you have uh, you know like a, a list of games you would pick a game you would go into game information the game information screen then you would launch the game so we have to think about that whole software side of uh, of the experience of our prototype so that's another big thread that we're looking at and the final thread is the licensing we have to talk to in ga indie game developers to see what kind of uh, licenses they're comfortable with uh, also talking to libraries to see what kind of uh, requirements they have to face and trying to bridge the two and bring them to a common accord uh, and that's the part i'm most interested in because that's the stuff i love right um I've been researching uh, copyright and law in, in the library setting for almost a decade now uh, and polishing off a thesis on the subject, a PhD thesis in law. So I really want to engage people in thinking about the licensing that would need to happen with born digital material straight to a library setting in a way that works perfectly. And obviously thinking about uh, licensing costs and subscription costs, although we're not quite there yet in terms of price points and things like that, but we are thinking of that as a as a whole item. And so that's the prototype uh, that we're working working on uh, with the uh, fund from the Night News Challenge, and we're really excited. The team at the Technoculture Art and Games, the TAG Research Center at Concordia University, the communities that we're engaged with in Montreal, uh, the Mo Montreal Public Libraries, but also a shout out to our friends in Austin because we also have the Austin Public Library on board with us, hoping to test out our prototype there and uh, maybe, maybe even have a little bit of a contest. Let's see what kind of games we can get from Austin uh, versus the kind of games we can get from the Montreal Indie Games uh, studios out there. So, uh, you know, we're not quite at the process of picking games yet we, for our prototype we'll probably just use a couple of uh, a couple of uh, quick games or some games that we can find uh, but yeah I'm thinking that maybe we can find a lot of really cool games uh, to include in this prototype we only want maybe half a dozen for this stage but uh, soon enough we'll probably want to amp it up and get a lot of cool games in there
So thank you, thank you, thank you, Knight Foundation, for this uh, this show of support for the Seed Bunny. We're hoping to really do some interesting things. So the prototype that we are building, and yeah, you know, and you're thinking, wait a minute, a prototype physical device that doesn't make sense. Why don't you go into straight, you know, straight into uh, streaming or downloads and things like that? Well, you know, we we want to build on uh, we want to build on. Uh, the strength of uh, local libraries. So libraries are physical buildings with people who work in them. You have service desks. Uh, and the other issue is not, you know, although high-speed internet is prevalent everywhere, not everybody has internet. You know, think about that. The idea that you physically get a box from a library with games in it means that you don't need any kind of other object at home except a, a TV. And I'll bet you there are more TVs in the U.S. than there are people in with internet. Uh, connection. So that's a pretty good gamble. I could check the data. I will check the data. But the point here is that, you know, uh, we want to use the physical strengths, the strengths of libraries as physical uh, institutions that are in communities to engage communities in interacting with digital games. And soon enough, we want to have you know, game workshops and, and game fests and game jams and all sorts of hack fests happening in uh, library settings. So uh, that's going to come soon. But for now, we have to deliver this prototype uh, by the uh, by June 2015. We want to do a little demo at the ALA uh, conference that's going to happen in San Francisco. That's the American Library Association conference uh, in San Francisco in June 2015. So we're going to be working really hard to figure out the case the kit, uh, the launcher, the operating system, the software side, that's the, the third thing, and then the licensing that needs to go into this kind of prototype phase. And then, yeah, if you're interested in seeing where it goes, uh, keep tuned uh, because uh, there's going to be some interesting uh, news on that front. So my name is Olivier Charbonneau. I am a librarian at Concordia University, and we are very fortunate to have received a prototype grant from the Night News Challenge. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more uh, information about this wonderful project. Thank you very much.